From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. I've always been fascinated with the local wild animals. But before, I was powerless to protect them. But now, Dr. Joseph Okui is anything but powerless. He is engaged in a dangerous struggle against a criminal poaching network to protect these animals, his lifelong passion. As chief warden of Gabon's Ivindo National Park, 1,200 square miles of dense rainforest, Joseph struggles to save severely endangered local forest elephants, increasingly hunted and killed for their valuable ivory tusks. They're particularly lucrative targets for poachers, he says, as they possess larger tusks per body weight than most other African species. In this region, it's known that there are what is referred to as the big carriers. There are elephants whose tusks touch the ground. Tom de Milliner is the coordinator of the United Nations program to monitor the illegal killing of elephants. Central African forests are being devastated by poaching. That's where most of the ivory comes from, illegal ivory comes from. The elephant tusks are smuggled out of Gabon as part of a vast international network of traffickers. Headed largely to Asia, the ivory is used for decorative and other purposes. With illegal trade in ivory products reaching record levels in 2011, it is feared that as many as 12,000 African elephants may be slaughtered every year for their tusks. We are losing the battle for African elephants in Central Africa. But Joseph recognizes that many poachers are often doing this work simply to survive. <laughs> One of the main forces driving the supply of tusks in Gabon, he believes, is poverty. And the region's poor indigenous pygmies, well known for their hunting skills, are especially vulnerable to exploitation by the traffickers. They don't have work. They have needs like everybody else. They don't have any professional skills. So the elephant, with the value of ivory, is an enormous temptation. Have you got any other means of earning a living apart from killing elephants? Afan, a local Baka pygmy, has just been arrested with another suspect when we arrived at Joseph's office in the town. Joseph asks him why he killed the elephant. Because they give me some soap, some salt and some petrol, because I don't have any, that's why I killed it. Afan was paid the equivalent of 40 US dollars a fortune to him, but a measly sum compared to the profit made by the middleman, who in turn sells the tusks to the traffickers for 25 times that amount. Now, Afan faces both a fine way beyond his means and a prison sentence of three to six months. Although government efforts have been stepped up to stop illegal poaching across the country, Joseph says it is important to curb not only the supply, but also the international demand for ivory. I think that if justice is going to be severe, it should be directed at the people who buy the ivory and put it on the international market, rather than at the young people who are just looking for means to feed their families. Much more needs to be done for conservation to become a reality. The international community should support a country like Gabon, which is really trying to solve this problem. This report was produced by Jill Fickling for the United Nations.